Hi, I'm Seth Grover. In this video, we're going to go through an installation of Malcolm as an installed appliance configuration using the installer ISO rather than just the Docker installation that we did in the previous video. We'll also be setting up Hedgehog Linux, which is a network traffic capture sensor that pairs with Malcolm and can forward log data to it. So uh, we're going to use virtual machines uh, in VirtualBox to do this. The steps that you would follow on uh, on a bare metal configuration would be basically the same other than the, the beginning part where we actually set up the VMs. This is going to assume that you have already either built or downloaded the ISO installer images for Malcolm and Hedgehog Linux prior to starting. If not, uh, head over to malcolm.fyi uh, and you can click on the download link there to get some uh, unofficial builds of the ISOs or if you want your own builds, uh, there are instructions in the documentation at github.com slash Idaho Labs slash Malcolm for building those ISO files. We'll start by creating a virtual machine for Malcolm. A uh, couple of things you'll want to note here. The underlying OS for an installed Malcolm instance is Debian Linux 64-bit. I recommend a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM to run Malcolm. If you can afford to give it 48 or 64 gigabytes, even better. We'll create a virtual hard disk for our Malcolm installation. But before starting the installation, we're going to go back into the VM settings and tweak a few more things. First, we need to enable EFI for the VM's boot firmware in order for the installer to work correctly. I'm increasing the number of processors for the VM to four here. If you've got more available, more cores is going to mean better performance. I'm going to attach the ISO installer for Malcolm to the virtual optical drive. I've previously configured a virtual NAT network in VirtualBox, uh, so I'm configuring the network adapter for Malcolm to use that network. And last but not least, I'm enabling a shared folder so that I can use that to copy files back and forth between the host and the VM uh, in case I need to do that. So I confirm these changes and click Start to begin the installation. The first thing we're presented with in the installer is a list of install options. In this case, since I'm installing into a virtual machine, I am going to choose Virtual Machine Single Partition Quick Install. Uh, if I was installing on hardware, I would probably choose quick install uh, or encrypted quick install if I wanted the disks to be encrypted. But for now I'm going to choose virtual machine single partition quick install. We are asked to specify a host name for this machine. Since I am not a creative person, I am going to call it Malcolm VM. We're also asked to specify uh, some passwords here and a username for the user account. You can either specify a root password and then a separate password for the user account, or you can leave the root password blank, in which case the user account will be added to the sudo group and you'll be able to run privileged commands with the sudo prefix should you need to do that. That's what I'm going to do in this case. 
As the installer finishes, it's going to ask us several questions about our installation of Malcolm. First, if IPv6 addressing should be disabled. Second, if it should automatically log into the graphical user desktop session. Third, if inactivity in that desktop session should cause the screen to lock and a password be required to unlock it. And finally, if the standard mandatory DOD notice and consent banner must be displayed in that desktop session, that last one really only applies if you're installing this at a United States government managed facility. I am going to select the defaults and go ahead and let the installer finish and it will reboot into the Malcolm desktop. One thing you will notice the first time the Malcolm base operating system opens up to the desktop is it will spend a couple of minutes importing the Docker images into the Docker runtime. Um, that only happens the first time and then after that Malcolm behaves just the same way it would on a regular Docker installation like the one we went through on the previous video. Now that we have Malcolm installed in a virtual machine, we're going to go through a similar process and set up the network sensor appliance. This is called Hedgehog Linux, which is part of the Malcolm project, and you can find it in the same place that you find Malcolm on malcolm.fyi or the Idaho Lab GitHub page under the sensor ISO subdirectory of the source code tree. As we set up the virtual machine for Hedgehog Linux, we're gonna go through basically the same process that we did before. There are a few configuration differences between this machine that we're creating for the network traffic capture sensor and the one we created for Malcolm. First, we don't need quite as much memory for this machine, so I'm going to set this to 8 gigabytes. Uh, I think 4 gigabytes would probably be okay as well. Second, I'm going to create a little bit larger hard disk for this virtual machine than we did for the Malcolm VM. Thirdly, Rather than just a single network adapter, I'm going to actually create two network adapters for this virtual machine. One will be used uh, for management or communication between Malcolm and Hedgehog. And so for that one, we are going to attach it to the NAT network, the same one that I created for the Malcolm VM. For the second network interface, we're going to attach it to that same network, but we're going to make sure that in the settings under promiscuous mode, we're going to set that to allow all. This is going to allow that interface to listen on the wire and capture traffic that it sees on that particular interface. For the most part, the installation of Hedgehog is going to go the same way as it did when we installed Malcolm using the ISO installer. The only difference really is you are going to be required to specify passwords for both the root account and the sensor service account, uh, where before with Malcolm we were allowed to leave the root password blank. Uh, you do need to specify passwords for both accounts in this case.
When the installer is finished, the machine will reboot and you will be dropped into Hedgehog Linux's kiosk mode, which is an overview of resource utilization for the sensor itself. I have booted both the Malcolm and Hedgehog virtual machines and have them side by side. We are going to open a terminal in Malcolm. We are going to change directories into the Malcolm subdirectory and we are going to run scripts slash auth setup. This is going to create a user account and password associated with that account that you will use to log into the web interface for Malcolm. This will also generate self-signed TLS certificates that will be used for encrypting the browser traffic and also the logs that are forwarded between Hedgehog and Malcolm. Now we are going to run sudo slash scripts slash install dot pi dash c. This runs the install script in configuration mode and we can use it to tune and tweak the behavior of the Malcolm installation. Um, a couple of things to note here that might be slightly different than the defaults or from what we did in the Docker video. We are going to need to make sure that we open the Logstash port for receiving the logs that are forwarded from Hedgehog. And then we're also going to make sure that we enable SSL so that the communication between Hedgehog and the Malcolm aggregator is done in an encrypted fashion. Uh, other than that, I'm not going to go into the details of what all of these different uh, parameters are. You can visit uh, Malcolm.fyi and click on documentation or go to github.com slash Idaho lab slash Malcolm and view that same documentation if you want to see what each of those configuration options are. In order for Malcolm to trust the connection it's going to receive from Hedgehog as Hedgehog is forwarding its logs, we need to get a couple of the files associated with those certificates that we just generated somewhere that we can uh, copy them over to our Hedgehog VM. What we're going to do in order to do that is copy the files from filebeat slash certs to our virtual box host shared folder so that in a few minutes we can copy them onto the Hedgehog VM. There's one other thing I'd like to do before we start Malcolm, and that is run the command IP space A, and look at the IP address of the Malcolm VM's virtual network interface so that we can use that IP address when we tell Hedgehog where to send its logs. Now we're finally ready to start Malcolm. We can do that in one of two ways. We could run slash scripts slash start, or we can click the Malcolm icon in the toolbar at the top of the desktop. So what I'm going to do is close this terminal window and click that start icon and we will see Malcolm start up and uh, another terminal window open with the output of those Malcolm containers scrolling past while we switch over and configure the hedgehog. The first thing we need to do is exit out of kiosk mode on the hedgehog. We can do that by hitting Alt F4 or Control Alt Delete, which will open the task manager. And then from there, you can click on the kiosk mode browser entry in the window toolbar and right click it and click close. I'd like to note here that everything I'm about to do with regards to the configuration of the Hedgehog sensor appliance itself is outlined in the documentation that can be found on github.com slash Idaho lab slash Malcolm under the sensor ISO subdirectory. We are going to click configure interfaces and host name in the toolbar at the top of the Hedgehog Linux desktop. Enter the root password that you created when you installed Hedgehog Linux. Let's first configure the interface that will be addressed and will be used for communication between Hedgehog and Malcolm. If you're not sure which interface that is, you can check the MAC address of the network interface against what you see in this list to make sure you pick the right one.
Again, this is going to be the first interface you configured, not the one that was set to allow promiscuous mode. I'm going to select static IP address and enter an IP address on the same subnet as the Malcolm aggregator. In this case, I could have chosen DHCP instead. Clicking OK should configure the network interface and bring you back to the main screen. Next, we'll configure time synchronization for the Hedgehog sensor. We can either specify an NTP server IP address to use the network time protocol to keep the Hedgehog's internal clock in sync, or we can specify the IP address of the Malcolm aggregator in order to sync its internal clock with that of the Malcolm aggregator. That's what I'll do in this example. Next, let's assign a host name to this VM. We can call it Hedgehog VM because that lines up with what I did on the Malcolm VM a few minutes ago. Now we're going to grab those certificate files that we copied to the host shared folder in VirtualBox. We're going to copy those files onto the sensor. We're going to place them in opt sensor sensor underscore CTL file beat. That specific path isn't especially important. We just need to get those files onto the hedgehog because we're going to need them in a few minutes when we set up forwarding. Next, click the icon for configure, capture, and forwarding in the toolbar at the top of the hedgehog desktop. Let's start by configuring traffic capture. We'll select the capture interface as the one that we didn't configure previously as the management interface. That is, the interface for which we enabled promiscuous mode when we configured the VM. We can now specify capture filters. This is useful when you have some protocol where you're not interested in saving the full payload of everything. For example, if you've got traffic from some security cameras, that video traffic takes up a lot of bandwidth and you're not interested in using your sensor's disk space to store PCAP that's going to be 99% video traffic, you can specify filters here that will allow you to filter that traffic out and save the space for what's really important. Here, I'm going to specify some ports that are used specifically for communication between the Hedgehog and Malcolm, as I'm not particularly interested in that traffic, and I'd like to ignore it. Next, we specify the location where PCAP files and Zeek logs are being stored on the sensor. This should be pre-populated for you with the values that were configured for capture during installation. The last configuration step for capture is specifying what kind of files we want to carve out of the network traffic we see and what to do with those files if they are found to be suspicious. We're presented with the summary of our capture configuration and dropped back to the main screen. Next we're going to configure file beat forwarding. This is the forwarder that sends the Zeek logs from Hedgehog to Malcolm. As we configure this we're going to specify the IP address of the Malcolm aggregator. We're going to specify that we're using SSL for the communication transport layer and we're going to point it at those uh, certificate files that we copied into opt sensor sensor CTL file beat a few moments ago. As we continue on to configure the other forwarders, next we'll configure Moloch Capture. Moloch Capture is the capture program that's going to store our full PCAP files and create uh, Moloch session records and send them to the Elasticsearch database on the Malcolm aggregator. In order for it to do this, it needs to know the IP address and the Elasticsearch port that we're running over on the Malcolm side. It's also going to ask us for a username and password. Now, if we wanted to, we could use the same username and password that we configured in Malcolm when we ran auth underscore setup a little while ago. However, uh, we can create a specific sensor uh, account on Malcolm that is only used for forwarding. This way we have separation of the different accounts that are used for browsing or analyzing data and for collecting and forwarding the data. In order to do this, we'll go back over to the Malcolm VM and we will click on the Malcolm user management icon in the toolbar. 
From there, we can log in with the administrator username and password that we created when we ran auth setup. And I'll create a couple of new users, one for the sensor for forwarding, and the other for an analyst to use when he logs into the web interface of Malcolm. Now we can go back over to the configuration for Moloch Capture and enter in the username and password that we just created in the Malcolm User Management screen for the sensor. It should do a quick connection test to make sure that it works, and then we can continue with the rest of this setup just accepting the defaults. You can proceed through the configuration of the rest of the forwarders similarly. Use the IP address of the Malcolm aggregator when prompted and the username and password that you created for the sensor. I won't go into the details of each one here, but you can find them in the documentation on the GitHub page. Once the forwarders have been configured, the final step is to configure auto start services. Choose this option from the configuration mode menu after the welcome screen of the sensor configuration tool. This dialog is used to specify which services, for example, Zeek, Moloch Capture, other PCAP engines, or forwarders are started when the sensor starts. You can see the documentation on GitHub for more details about each one. Now that we're done configuring captured and forwarding, click the Restart Services icon from the toolbar at the top of the Hedgehog Linux desktop. After a few moments, you'll see a message indicating that the services that you have configured are starting. Notice that we also see some activity on the Malcolm side as the forwarders are started up and begin their communication with Malcolm. At this point, everything on the sensor and in Malcolm has been configured and is up and running. So all this left is for us to do a little bit of spot checking and see it in action. If you want to check the health of the containers running on Malcolm, you can open a terminal, navigate to the Malcolm directory, and type docker-compose space ps. The docker stats command can give you useful information about the resources each Malcolm component is consuming. The sensor service status icon in the toolbar on the sensor can give you an overview of which services on the sensor are running and how long they've been up. From a terminal, you can get that same status report by running slash opt slash sensor slash sensor underscore CTL slash status. Additionally, log files for each service on the sensor can be found in opt sensor sensor CTL log. The handy sensor watch function can be run to see which Zeek log files and PCAF files are being written to currently. Let's generate some network traffic on the sensor and then hop back over to Malcolm to see it. I'll open a web browser and navigate to a website. Since our capture interface should be seeing all of the traffic on this VirtualBox NAT network, we should see capture artifacts that reflect that HTTP session. In Malcolm, we'll open Kibana and authenticate ourselves with the analyst username and password we created in the user management tool.
After a few minutes, we will see the corresponding traffic show up in the Kibana dashboards on Malcolm. If we configured the other forwarders on the sensor, besides the FileBeat forwarder that's sending the Zeek logs, we can check a couple of other dashboards to make sure that data is coming through as well. This includes the FileBeat syslog dashboard, which should show us syslog entries from the sensor. the audit beat audit d overview dashboard that shows us audit logs from the sensor and the metric beat system host overview dashboard that shows us resource utilization on the sensor Aside from Kibana, we can also see our network traffic in the Moloch interface. Click the icon of the OWL in the toolbar to open Moloch. We can use the View button to filter between logs generated by Zeek and Moloch session records generated by Moloch Capture. Remember a few minutes ago when I browsed to that website? Here we can see a Moloch session record for that HTTP session where I opened example.org. When I expand the session, Malcolm will communicate back to the hedgehog and retrieve the packet payload so that I can view and see the actual contents that went across the wire when I browsed example.org. This, of course, applies to other types of packets as well. If I go back over to Kibana, I can look for that HTTP traffic by opening the HTTP dashboard. Satisfied that everything is working, if I click on the hedgehog icon in the toolbar on the sensor, I can reopen kiosk mode and use that to monitor the performance of my sensor. So there you go. In less than a half hour, we've set up a network sensor to capture network traffic and forward it on to Malcolm for aggregation and analysis. I hope this video was helpful. Please visit the Malcolm project on GitHub at github.com slash idaholab slash Malcolm for more information. Thanks for watching.